What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic material instance. In this case, we're going to use it as an overlay material on this character. When we go over and look at them, you can see we've got this kind of pulsing bluish overlay over the character. And if we're not looking at them, they don't have this overlay. So let's say you wanted to be able to interact with other characters or objects in your game and you wanted them to have this kind of dynamic overlay material, I'm going to show you how to set this up. So without further ado, guys, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty, guys, now the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project using the third person template, hit create. And once the editor has fired up, I am going to add the first person content pack to this project. So I'm going to click add down here and add feature content or pack and add the first person content pack. And then the next thing I'm going to do in the world settings here is just change the game mode override to BP first person game mode so that we are on this map. Now we have the first person character and we also have the third person character here in third person blueprints, which I'm going to drag out into the world here, turn it around. And this is what we're going to use as an example of our overlay material. So the next thing we can do is create our overlay material. I'm going to create it right here in the third person blueprints folder. I'm going to right click and go to material, material, and I'm going to call this M underscore overlay and open this up. And now we're not going to be going deep into materials here. If you want to learn more about materials, I highly recommend you check out Velocity's materials tutorials on this channel, but we're just going to create a very basic overlay material. So I'm going to change the blend mode here from opaque to translucent. I'm going to click on the base color here and I'm going to make this blue and maybe like a light blue like so. And let's use a Fresnel node, or Fresnel. I'm going to plug this into opacity. And if I make this something like 1.5, we can see we've got this nice sort of like translucent blue material that is darker or sort of more opaque towards the edges. So what I can do is save this material and open up BP third person character. And if I search for overlay, I can change the overlay material to the overlay material that we've just made. So now if I have a look at this character, you can see they've got this kind of blue tinge overlaid onto the character. Very nice. But we want to be able to control this Fresnel effect that we've added to the opa opacity node here. So what I'm going to do is multiply this. And if I hold one and click, I can plug this in here and let's change the default value to one just so that we can see it happening here. And I'm going to right click on this and convert to parameter. And I'm going to call this parameter opacity. And it is very important that you remember exactly what this parameter is called because we will need to uh, call it by name in our blueprints in order to change this parameter. So now that we've created a parameter, we can create a dynamic instance of this material in blueprints. So how we're going to do that is in the BP third person character in the construction script, we're going to go in here and we are going to create dynamic material instance. And the parent that we're going to create this instance from is the dynamic, whoop, we called it overlay, didn't we? The M underscore overlay. And I'm going to drag all this return value and promote to a variable. And let's just call it dynamic overlay something like that. And we now need to set the overlay material as this dynamic material instance here. So we can grab our mesh and we can set overlay material. And we're going to set the overlay material as this material instance here. 
like so. And then the other thing we need to do here is set the opacity parameter to zero because um, at the moment you can see she's blue. Obviously by default, we don't want her to be blue. So what we're going to do is grab our dynamic overlay here and we can look for set scalar parameter value. And here is where we need to name that parameter. So we need to call this by name, make sure that you spell this correctly, opacity, just like we named the parameter in here, opacity, and we'll set that value to zero. So now when we compile, you see that this will execute. And if we go back here, you'll see that that blue tinge is gone. We are going to play with this parameter at runtime so that we can sort of uh, show the player that we're interacting with this person or object. So how we're going to do that is in BP third person character in the event graph, we can create a couple of custom events. I'm going to call the first one start overlay. Actually, no, I am not going to create a custom event. I'm going to use a blueprint interface. So actually back here in the third person blueprints folder, I'm going to right click and go to blueprint blueprint interface, and it's going to be BPI underscore interact. We can open this up and we can rename the first function as start overlay. And we'll add another function and we'll call that stop overlay. Like so that is literally all we need to do in here. We can compile and save and close this. And then in the BP third person character, we go to class settings and down here, in implemented interfaces, we can add an interface and we'll add that BPI interact that we just created. And then over here in interfaces, you'll see start, start and stop overlay. Um, now you can right click on these and implement event, or you can simply double click on these and it will create an event in the event graph like so. So I'm going to double click on both of these and bring in start and stop overlay. And now that these are here, uh, let's create a system in our first person character to interact with this third person character. So let's go to our first person folder and blueprints and open up BP first person character. And I'm just going to do a line trace on tick. Um, it's probably not the best idea. You may want to uh, create a, actually, you know what, let's do this properly. So I'm going to create a custom event and I'm just going to call it um, check for interaction, something like that. And this is what we're going to call and we'll call it on event begin play with a timer. So we can find event begin play instead of doing this on tick. I'm just going to make it happen every 0.2 of a second or something like that. So it's a tiny bit more performant than doing it on tick. And what we can do is um, we can set timer by function name. And then I'm going to copy paste this function name, check for interaction and paste it in here, function name and make this 0 0.2 and looping. And now starting on event begin play, this will be called every 0.2 of a second, um, which is going to be a lot less often than on event tick. And what we need to do here is draw a line trace from our camera so we can get our first person camera here and we can get location, get world location. And I'm also going to get the forward vector off of get world location, we can do a line trace by channel. And then for the end point, what we need to do is get this forward vector and multiply it by right clicking on this pin and change this to float single precision. And I'm just going to make this 150 units so that we can just interact. So this will be the distance with which you can interact with this line trace. We can drag off of get world location and find an add node, plug this in here and then plug this into the end point here. And 
just very quickly, I am going to change the draw debug type to for duration. I'm going to hit compile and the play. And I'm just going to check that that line trace is working. And it does seem to be working. Um, but it is not colliding with anything. It is not um, overlapping with anything. So actually what we might do is create our own trace channel. So if we go to edit and project settings and search for trace channel, here you've got some custom trace channels. We can add a new trace channel and I'm going to call it interact. And I'm going to change the default response to ignore so that now pretty much everything will ignore this line trace unless we set it to not ignore that line trace. So we can go to our third person character here and in the viewport just to visualize this a bit better. What we can do is select the mesh here and search for collision. And if we drop down collision presets here, we'll see all the presets and interact here that we've just created is by default ignore. So we can just change these collision presets to custom and we can make this mesh block the interact trace channel like so. And if we go back to our first person character, I might need to right click on this node and go refresh nodes and then trace channel here, interact will be added here. So we can change the trace channel to interact. And now if we hit play, this trace will not interact with anything except the third person character mesh like so. So you can see it is in fact blocking on that character mesh. Very nice. So anything that you want to interact with in your game, you would need to make sure that it is blocking the interact trace channel because obviously we don't want to go through and change it to ignore on every single thing that we want to ignore the trace channel. Uh, it'd be much easier to just go to the parent class of whatever objects you want to be able to interact with and change it to block like that. Nice. So now that we, we've seen that that trace is blocking on that mesh, we can set up our logic here to, um, to interact and um, call these, these functions right here, start and stop overlay. So what we are going to do first is check if we hit anything. So we can drag off this return value and find a branch. We can also drag off of this out hit and break hit result and drop this down. And all we're going to need from here is the hit actor like so. So uh, what we might do first is check if the actor implements the interface. So we can find does, whoops, does object implement interface. And the interface we want to check if it implements is our BPI interact. And if we put this on a branch, this means that now this will only execute if something actually implements this interface. Um, but we will also keep this check here. Um, it's just, it's just more thorough to do both of these checks. So after this, uh, what we need to do is get our hit actor and promote it to a variable. And I'm going to change this to uh, interactable actor, like so interactable actor, plug this in here. And also I want a do once because this line trace is going to keep tracing and keep tracing. And we don't want to start this event more than once. And then after that, we can drag off this interactable actor and we're going to call our start overlay message in our third person character or wherever else you've added these events. And now what we can do is the logic to stop the overlay when we haven't hit something. So what we can actually do is get our interactable actor. We're going to get interactable actor and right click and convert it to validated get. And this is going to plug into the false here, but we are also going to plug it into the false on this branch over here. So 
this way if we don't hit anything at all um, it will also sort of cancel this overlay effect and then what we can do is drag off of interactable actor here and stop overlay message and we'll set these functions up in a moment um, and then after this what we actually want to do is clear this reference to the interactable actor so if we set it and don't plug anything in here we are clearing this reference because we don't want to carry around this reference with us forever so we can clear that reference and then we can plug this into the reset on the do once like so and that is everything that we need to do in here we just need to set up these functions in our third person character so if we head back on over to our bp third person character um, what i might do is create a variable here i'll create a variable and call it overlay question mark and i'm going to set this as true when we start overlaying i'm going to hit compile now and just double check that the default value of overlay is set to false and it is and then what we can do is get our overlay and make a branch and from here we are going to call a timeline that is going to change that opacity value on our dynamic material instance so we can drag off of true here and add a timeline and let's call it opacity timeline and i'm actually going to plug this into play from start like so we can double click on the opacity timeline to open it up and I am going to add a float track here and I can just call it opacity and I'm going to make the length one second. I'm going to make the length one second and then I'm going to shift, hold shift and click three times to create three key notes here, keyframes. I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to set it to time zero and value one. I'm going to set the second one to time 0 0.5, whoops, 0 0.5 and 0. And the third keyframe, I'm going to set to time 1 and value 1. And then I can click these icons here, whoops, to zoom out so I can see everything. I'm going to select all three of these keyframes and I'm going to right click and change these to auto to smooth them out a little bit. And then that is all we need to do in here. We can close this timeline now. And now we have this output here for opacity. And what we can do is get our dynamic overlay here and set scalar parameter value on update. And what we're going to set it as is the opacity like so. And now when this timeline finishes we basically want this to loop so i'm just going to set up a very basic loop here by getting finished and drag it onto the start of this branch and i'll just move this and double click to get some reroute nodes bring this over the top to keep it neat nice and now this will keep looping until we set this to false and what we're going to do on the stop overlay is we're going to hold S and click to get a sequence. I can plug this in here and then I'm going to duplicate this set overlay node, uncheck this. The first thing we're going to do is set overlay as false. And then off of here, we are going to stop this timeline. And then um, before I forget, we need to name the parameter here in the set scalar parameter. Um, I continuously forget to do this, so make sure that you do this. And to make sure that this is done again, I'm going to grab these two and duplicate them down here. Plug this in here and set that value to zero, like so. And that should be all set up and ready to go. Um, I am actually going to go back to my first person character and i'm going to change the draw debug type on my line trace to none so that it doesn't distract me and get in the way i know that that line trace is working and now when i look at this character within 150 units 
you can see they've got this nice little overlay pulsing going on. And if I look away, it will stop. And as soon as I look at them, they're going to light up and pulse like so when I'm within 150 meters. So this is, uh, this is a pretty nice effect. You can add this to the parent class on any of your NPCs or objects that you want to light up when you look at. And this has also in the process shown you how to create and manipulate a dynamic material instance. So guys, if this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.